I tell people there's a difference between Christianity and Catholicism. So here, here we have three ways prophecy comes. I speak to you. Ah, there's a sister somewhere. Now, hey, yes, 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 you're holding a blue. My dear amazing viewer, I know the video before this one, I was just looking like I was angry, blah, blah, blah. All of those things are acting, okay? <laughs> Every video comes to the vibe, okay? So today we are talking about how to know a false prophet, okay? Nigeria is one of the countries, as <laughs> you guys know that I, right now I'm moving, I'm going beyond Nigeria and then talking about a whole lot of different people because of the connections I've also made right here on the space. Um, see that since I started reacting to trends, that concern people that you call um the anointed i see you yourself are not anointed but if i don't want to see those comments of touch not my anointed again in the comments if you haven't watched my video on touch not my anointed then i would just anyone that says those kind of things i'll just refer you back to go and watch that video so you have an understanding of where my mindset comes from scripturally okay but now we are looking at how can you know who a false prophet is okay and right now even as you watch this video please 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 some of you right now will now start scanning your brain and scanning your souls that have been under prophetic ministrations okay i believe in the fivefold ministry a whole lot okay so i'm not here to um you know disprove whatever you believe in because i know that those things do exist all right but what i want you to understand right here is that what we are looking at in this video is scriptural okay so that um you not look as if i'm just like a talking drum in nigeria we know we have a lot of prophets some of you watching me right now are prophets in your own capacity i read some comments i see prophet this prophet this i'm like ah yeah <laughs> when i talk about just stuff for those they look up to as papa this this that they all of them land from everywhere some people even started making videos on facebook and tagging my using my hashtag being real george okay so i have a facebook page called the same name as this channel being real george and an instagram handle where i post to you one minute two minute clips of the videos that i have made here on youtube so you might decide to follow me on both platforms all right but looking at the main topic today we have our main important most important guest that's going to help us the dissect as in dichotomize this particular topic of prophecy <laughs> and i understand the fact that benny hen right now is a very good friend of pastor chris whom i respect so much all these people i watch them on social media i respect them as humans as i am so he has come out to talk about how you can know who a false prophet is benny hen all right so you will not believe me don't believe me okay don't believe me and i always tell you guys don't believe everything you watch on social media just use your brain and analyze everything so i want to play his clip for you to listen to him talk about how to know who a false prophet is and at the same time as he is talking sean was going to be speaking to you about this whole idea of prophetic okay walking in the prophetic because when people say i prophesy i prophesy to you blah 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 it comes in three forms okay Here, here we have three ways prophecy comes. God, the devil, or the human spirit. And you saw it in Deuteronomy that someone can be, which is the devil's, you know, source, how it can come to pass because the devil knows some stuff. So it's important to note that he agrees that based on scripture, some false prophets may get it right on occasion, and it's from the devil. But we know that from scripture, true prophets of God always got it right. And now he gives a way to tell if it's a prophet of God. When someone gives me a prophecy, is it making me, is it bringing me closer to the Lord? Or is it me driving, or is it driving me away from the Lord? So when you, when you look to the guy or the lady and you stop looking to the Lord, that's a false prophet. So he's right, because we are warned in Jeremiah 23 about these people that fill you with vain hopes and are speaking from their own minds, not from God. This is exactly what most of today's prophets do. They prophesy breakthrough, financial gain, and blessings on your life. This is vain hope self-serving desires that have nothing to do with God. He tells us another thing about prophecy. Number two, 
What kind of fruit does it leave in your life afterwards? What kind of fruit do you have after the prophecy? Remember, prophecy is for what? Edification, exhortation, comfort. And once again, he's right about what prophecy is today. Deuteronomy 18 tells us that if they get a prophecy wrong, they are not from God and death was the punishment. So he continues, try to make sense of this. So the fruit is what? Well, if you don't, if you don't remember what the man said, how can you be uh, comforted? How can you be edified? So sometimes someone says, the Lord says the Lord and they prophesy and about a day later, you don't even remember what, what they said to you. You gotta go back and find out what, what, what did they say? How can a prophecy be forgotten? Because it's not the Lord. If you forget the prophecy, it's not the Lord. He's just making stuff up because there is no scripture to back this. If a person doesn't remember what a prophecy spoken was, that means it wasn't from God? Nonsense. And we'll finish off with just one more. Prophecies for confirmation. Because you already know in your heart as a believer what God is saying to you. And all prophecy is, is it confirms what you know already. And we need it. We all need it. You know, I'm not pushing it away. We all need the prophetic. So Benny says prophecy confirms what we already know. Yeah, I looked and I just couldn't find any Bible verses to back that statement up. Now, well, I, <laughs> I, don't know if you, I don't know if you understood anything of what you just watched, but I want you to understand something. Even in Nigeria, I had Iginla saying one time in a video that it's as if um, pastors, uh, it's as if there is this particular tussle between power power-based preachers. I'm going to play it to you so you get to see power-based preachers and um, pastors, okay? So people are now coming against people of power. So people that are operate in the function of what I say, quote-unquote, prophetic or those who have, quote-unquote, signs to them, of which you should know. You should know that it's not all signs that you see that are of God, but because of the what um, Father Oloma talked about with the whole idea of, you know, disguising themselves with fruit or would I say, you know, things that should portray that this person is of God, you cannot see who is of God or who is not of God anymore. So when people keep talking about Prophet T.B. Joshua or something, I, I respect everyone by the name they call themselves. Do I know who is of God or who is not of God? I don't come on this channel and tell that this person is of God or not of God. This person is real or fake. It's not my place to do so and I can't do so. But I point out to you facts so that you use your mind and tell yourself if you are following the right person or if you are following the wrong person. But listen to this right now because I know that there's a tussle in Nigeria with regards to this whole power base. Come on, you, you can remember the major himself say that Okotie himself does not have any one miracle or maybe one. You know the way he said it, I want to address what a one a stupid person. <laughs> and you see pastors calling themselves out or quote and unquote church leaders calling themselves out. And you now ask yourself a question. They make you believe touch not my anointed. If you haven't watched that video, watch it, okay? They make you believe touch not my anointed. Yes, still, they come out on social media and curse out themselves and call themselves names. And yes, still, you don't have a brain thinking in your head to know that there is something going on here that you don't know. All of these people work like a cult. They work like a, like a group. Everyone more of like protects the image of who they love. That's why you see maybe this particular pastor, um, his miracle is being um, at the time that we're talking about Apostle Justin Suleiman's uh, miracle money, which I proved to you that based on my own opinion that I don't believe in that particular um, um, that particular scenario. We saw other prophets come out and say that, oh yes, he believes in miracle money. Reno Mokri came out and said that, oh yes. But if you look at Reno Mokri's analysis of his own miracle money, why he believes in it, of course, which I know that. It's just like how we, we key into trend. That particular keyword was actually a trend at that time. So using miracle money in your video is actually going to get you into more views and more exposure. If you look at Prophet Jeremiah's analysis of miracle money, what he was saying is totally different from what we experienced with regards to Apostle Joseph Suleiman when he was talking about angels putting money in your pocket, all right? But they came out with their own, their own views about miracle money. But the whole idea you ask, I'm trying to make you understand here is this whole thing of protecting the image of those in the same circle. But yesterday people will not understand this. 
a mission right here right now like the video i played for you of benny hen he is correct i'm on a mission right here to promote good utterances that the good things that men of god do okay and i think it's a good thing that we also not just talk about the things that they say that are somehow confusing or would i say very controversial in the body of christ but also when they make good um, uh, um statements like these that are scripturally that you also can get to learn from it remember the prophet in ghana <laughs> that prophesied about the football match <laughs> i don't know some of you if you remember and in the end what happened <laughs> which particular team won <laughs> i don't want to talk about it and in the end people still go to that church just imagine people that actually use his his football match prediction and decided to go and bet on it just imagine how they will they will lose over 1.5 or over 2.5 just imagine how they would lose and you now ask yourself what is the business of a prophet of god predicting football matches how does that edify the body of christ if it's not for you to make yourself pointing people to yourself that you are something that hears from god or you are someone that hears from god and in the end when your prophecy fails uh, okay like what the major the major one said that a prophet can change the mind of god that god can say a and then a prophet will come and say b I know there are scriptures that people can always use to prove that but sometimes ask yourself a question some things do they really make sense to you when you listen to them or do you just go with this whole goosebumps ah rema ah power pal ah yeah papa speak do you go home and sit down read the scripture and ask the holy spirit to minister unto you because i don't know whether you even have the holy spirit in you that you believe that anything your man of god says hook line and sinker it is what it is i'm someone that i've since i was in the seminary i am always a think i've always been thinking i was one of the people that when i was in the seminary then i used to ask questions they come for crs class they're teaching us this i'm asking questions but yes still this is a this is a fold i grew up in and i want to say because of this 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 about my church or the church that my family comes from that means i should desert it and because even the place i'm going to there is not perfect the day you find the perfect church in this world that 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 is when you have found real imperfection so all of the denomination and dichotomies we have in the name of christianity none of them is perfect because they are made of people and nobody is perfect even the most people you think that are perfect when you read the bible they all had issues with themselves or scandals or issues or whatever david to come on name them what i want you to understand right here is that the more you sit down and keep looking for man the more you sit down and keep instead of looking up to god but you're looking up to man to be the i hope you're not looking up to man to be the author and finisher of your faith because if you're doing that that is idolatry And please make sure to confirm the scriptures you've heard Sean talk about because Sean is someone I really respect so much when it comes to his analysis on you know the things that uh, these men of God do talk about. Sean is you know based in the US, so he talks about the pastors in the US and all of that. These are channels that major on talking about you know men of God, but my channel is not about that. I analyze trends, but because of the trends that I've analyzed that has to do with people you love so much and you worship them or whatever. Uh, based on the comments i see in the comment section that's why i'm making uh, these videos so that you guys would you know actually have a rethink of how you think sometimes okay so it's not every ah, i speak to you ah there's a sister somewhere now hey yes 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 you're holding a blue bag yeah yeah that blue bag there is 500 dollars inside yeah that dollars is on the right side of the back of the pocket which is under of which there is one tangerine on top of it uh, hey good that five hundred dollars you should no 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 ask yourself these things that are happening all these things are seeing about kini kiniko how does it edify you does it point you to the person of jesus or does it point you to the man because it's after all this magic after all this because come on you have looked at the fact that some also come from means from divinations so after all of these experiences that's when they always come with the whole idea of when they sow a seed of a, of ten thousand dollars in fact trash your pocket and bring out anything you have because you have experienced what should be quote and unquote power if they say anything it is the word of god so you start sowing 
everything is a process if i want to sit down and analyze the process of how these people go to now put you in that induced state of bringing out every penny in your pocket i'm telling you there's a lot of psychological things going on in churches that is why most pastors are very educated people that when they come they know what they're doing most especially but anyway where i'm going to with all of these things i told you guys i'm working on a, a series of videos that has to do with showing you similarities that are in the orthodox churches that i now see practice in the pentecostal circles but these were the same things that pentecostal circles always criticize the uh, orthodox people for which led from orthodox people to move from where they are to pentecostal circles but it's not this is not a pentecostal orthodox or catholic whatever kind of war or whatever no 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 no. i sit down objectively and look at all of these things happening and i present the facts to you I tell people there's a difference between Christianity and Catholicism. <laughs> there's a different there should be a difference between Pentecostalism <laughs> and Christianity.